stare down to end NXT? Is Index really not becoming a thing? And a new title is back, but two millionaires had to climb a industrial golden ladder to become the new million dollar champion. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling and we are reviewing last night's NXT and we are starting. I mean, you had stellar matchups. This was, of course, the go home show going into this Sunday's NXT in your house. We had Michael Hayes portraying his 1980s, 1990s WWE character. It seemed like we were all set for TakeOver. But I think, I think we have to say a little memorial for Index. Pop decks might be a thing. So, obviously, if you have not been keeping up with NXT, Candice LeRae and Indy Harwell have basically been calling out Poppy. If you don't know who Poppy is, she is a Grammy-nominated award winner. I think she won a Grammy. Not sure. Um, she does a lot of the theme songs for NXT TakeOver. She has a great relationship with Triple H and NXT in general. Actually, her song is the NXT theme song, the new one. So, she was going to be on NXT, ten, well, last night promoting her new album which is inspired by NXT and Candice LeRae walks out and basically calls out Poppy saying we shouldn't be talking about Poppy you know the NXT tag titles are here we're way more important and Indy's like oh my god did you see last week Dexter was listening to on the headphones to the music I better go find him and Triple H and Poppy are talking conducting an interview William Regal's there and Dexter gives Poppy a drawing and goes to hug Poppy and then Indy walks in and Triple H gives the meme of the year. I am not on marking this, the meme of the year. Triple H is like, oh my god. And also Triple H very much in the beginning of this pulled the whole old school card like you can just drop an album from your phone. What? Come on Triple H. Gotta get on that technology. You're not like your tag team partner Shawn Michaels over there. So Indy is heartbroken, Candace comes to the ring, and Candace is like, you know, you're breaking up indexed, like no one cares about Poppy, calls Poppy out and Poppy goes, I may not wrestle, but I know someone who will, and Io Shirai returned to beat up Candace LeRae, and I'm really excited about this, I like that, it, I like that Io kind of went away for a while before coming back. I definitely see her being one of the superstars who get called up in the draft late August, early September. That's the rumor draft right now. But this was really good. I just see. I don't know how Index is gonna end. Like, is this gonna be when Indy parts ways with the way? Like, that's what I'm feeling. I think Indy's gonna part ways with the way, and then her and Dex are just gonna go off and win gold. I think that's what's going to happen. Probably not, but I'll just say that in my heart. And speaking of the what, kicked off with Austin Theory versus Oni Lorcan in a killer match. Pete Dunne came to ringside, Johnny Gargano came to ringside. Obviously, both men are in the Fatal Five Way match this Sunday. And these two, I'm gonna call this was the match of the night. It was so well. Austin Theory did like a Spanish fly off, off like the top, like a Spanish, I think Spanish DT off like the top rope. But Austin lost. <laughs> Oni Lorcan got the win. But this was really good. I like that they sent Austin down to NXT instead of like just pushing him on the main roster and him not doing anything. Because now he gets to learn under Johnny and the way. I like the way. I'm a huge fan of the way. Because it's always the right way. And also, announced for next week, we have a tornado tag team match between the Grizzled Young Veterans and Thatcher and Ciampa, which is very exciting. So. The girls are young veterans who were in a squash match, the girls are young veterans won, and then Chomp and Thatcher were like, oh, like, you guys want the IC tag titles, but you gotta go through us first, and they're like, oh, let's do old school turning out tag team. So, I don't know why they didn't put this on the pay-per-view. I mean, I know that they try to keep NXT pay-per-views a little bit short, but I was just very shocked they didn't. There's only like five matches on Sunday. 
sense. But, I mean, it's gonna be a good match, but I would like to see it on the pay-per-view, even in the pre-show. I mean, I think they're gonna do Larray and Shirai in the pre-show. I think that's what we're kind of aiming towards. But I want to talk about the fact that MSK and Bronson Reed, with all the titles on the line, like, uh, versus Legado del Fantasma, it's a six-man tag with all the titles on the line. I do not understand why we couldn't do two separate matches. I understand why we're doing the six of them together, it makes sense, but to me, I, I, I don't like that. Like, Legado del Fantasma, yeah, they're a stable, but MSK and Bronson Reed aren't. So it low-key doesn't make sense, from my opinion. I, I would just rather, you know, Bronson Reed versus Santos Escobar than MSK versus Legado del Fantasma. They could be way simpler because now, if all three of them lose, like, where do you go from here? So I'm really confused on that. I don't understand why. But one thing I did understand was this ladder match that we got added to our next nice takeover card because. Cameron Grimes and LA Knight, they were showing like mansions and how they're living the million dollar lifestyle and they both pulled up to the CWC and Teddy Bowser was waiting for them in the ring and Teddy Bowser like, you know, you're going to face off on Sunday, but you're going to face off in a ladder match. So it comes, the ladder comes down. It was really cool. And it was this platinum gold ladder with like money signs on it. And now Cameron Grimes is like, oh, I'm going to climb this ladder up to the moon. But Ted, I don't know what I'm like, what am I reaching for? So then the I don't know what to call them the guys who were with Ted bring a briefcase and they put the briefcase up and they're like you're fighting for this and they unveil the million dollar championship this was of course rumored for the past couple weeks now this is really exciting because you, to me it's a great way to elevate a superstar because now you have that prestigious title that was used in the 80s but I don't know if after Sunday, Ted DiBiase leaves, or if Ted DiBiase is going to become the manager for either LA Knight or Cameron Grimes, I'm going to assume Cameron Grimes is going to win. I would not mind LA Knight winning, but I'm just going to go with Grimes. I just feel like that makes a lot of sense. So, I don't know. Like, does Ted leave? Does Ted stay? I don't know. But very intriguing. Very exciting. And then our main event match is Dakota Kai versus Ember Moon in a really good match that ended in a DQ. Well, this DQ made sense though, because Ember hit Raquel by accident, and then Raquel ran into the ring and attacked Ember, but Ember looked strong because she hit the Eclipse on Raquel. I would love if Ember won. I don't think she's going to, because Raquel literally just won the title like two months ago. <laughs> But this is going to be a really good match. It's between two superstars who you know are going to deliver and put on a stellar women's match. But, D no DQs. But I know that this is, this is low-key. We're low-key playing the seeds, guys. Dakota Kai is going to turn on Raquel Gazelle. I don't think it's going to happen this Sunday. Just saying. And that's going to be the summer, that's going to be the NXT TakeOver Slam, uh, Slam, uh, Summer Slam, wow, Slam anniversary. I'm thinking of TNA. It's going to be a Summer Slam match. Like the NXT TakeOver SummerSlam, that's what it's gonna be. And then, to end the show, we had our stare down for the Fatal Five Way. And Cross was in there and Regal was trying to tell Cross that he doesn't run the show. And then Gargano was trying to tell him that you're not Johnny Taker or Johnny Wrestling, like I'm gonna beat you. Then Don, well Riley came out before Johnny and Riley was like, you know, I'm gonna win. And Dunn was like, I don't want to wait, I just want to compete, like, I just want to fight. And then Adam Cole appeared on the screen, he, like, I defeated all of you guys, I don't know why you guys are even, like, you guys are all chumps, I'm gonna win, I'm the most prestigious, and then they all started beating each other up, and then Cole came out last, and held up the title to end our show. The Fatal 5 way match very much intrigues me. I like this segment because it was kind of all five of them engaging to give you a preview of what's going to happen on Sunday. But to me, I don't think that main events should be more than four people if it's a standard wrestling match. Like, if it's a gimmick match, so of course the Elimination Chamber, um, the six-way scrambles, the, the six scrambles that they used to do, that I don't mind. But I just feel like it's so weird. There's so many people. And I just feel like, I just feel like, where do you go from here for the person who's going to get pinned? I'm assuming Johnny's going to take the pen. 
to whoever wins. But like, what do you do with the other person that gets the pin? Like, where do you go from here? So I don't know. I mean, like I said, takeover is, is a really good card. Every takeover just exceeds every expectation you have. But there's a couple things that I'm really questionable about. But this NXT show is really, really good. And that is my review as we head in to In Your House. So make sure to like this video. Comment what y'all thought about NXT. Click that bell for notifications for the other two great people on this channel. And subscribe. And I will see you all when we review SmackDown and AEW Dynamite. But head over to my channel because on Thursday we're reviewing Woman Division 